Richard Simmons, the man who takes lumps off your hips and brings them to your throat. <laughs> you're not supposed to say anything yet because I'm writing, I'm reading out an introduction to you. Oh, you're, go ahead. You're, 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 You're not, you're not here for another 30 seconds, Spike. Hold on. I'm going to puzzle the audience as to who you are. And now, the man you're about to meet is the undisputed genius of modern comedy. Everybody who even tries to be funny in Britain is painfully aware that he was there first and funniest. It's appropriate that the splendid new collection of his writings is called A Celebration. I'm going to cut my ecstatic introduction short at this point because when Prince Charles tried it, he was rudely interrupted by his great friend and my most welcome guest, Spike Milligan. The, uh, the day after I called him a groveling little bastard, <laughs> I, I sent him a telegram saying, I suppose a, a knighthood's out of the question. <laughs> it's real good of you to come today, because I know you've had... It's very good, yeah. The money was good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you've had a, I know you've had a tough day signing books, and there's nothing, there's nothing tougher than signing books. Yeah. People puzzle me, chap say, just as I was coming on here. Yeah. One of the stage answered, how are you? And I said, are you, are you a doctor? <laughs> He said, he said, no. I said, well, if you must know, I've got this pain in my knee. <laughs> he said, oh, dear. Oh, dear. I said, that's no bloody good. <laughs> you ask me how I am, give me, some, give me something to do it with it, don't you? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's fame. And I think Richard Sim Simmons, uh, he deserves his fame, doesn't he? The one who just uh, sits there and this woman gives they, him this harsh interview. They ought to be locked into a refrigerator for life. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and I, what, what, I am worth it, Spike. What, what, I'm worth it. What, 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 what is, huh? is, is it, you are worth it. Every morning I get up and I look in the mirror and I say, you are worth it. I thought, no, you're bloody not. <laughs> What about getting up in the morning with Richard Simmons there in your bed? You know, he threatens to be there for the first five minutes of every day. Oh, uh, him? Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to think about that. <laughs> yes, uh, I suppose, yes. Uh, could work it out. Uh, some, my, I said to my father once, what would you, if you woke up in the morning and found you were a woman, what would you do? He said, well, I'd go for a walk and see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> he also was an Irish father and woke me up at three o'clock one morning and said, wake up. I said, what is it, Dad? He said, listen, I've never shot a tiger. <laughs> I said, well, why tell me? <laughs> he said, well, I've got to tell somebody. <laughs> I used to think he was a normal father. You know? <laughs> but what about the woman uh, earlier on? What's her, what was her name? Penelope. Penelope Smith. She's, who act, says she can actually communicate telepathically with animals. Well, this yeah. first dog she had. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I haven't stopped laughing since I watched it. <laughs> this first dog, she said, he says to me that he was riding on a truck and he was thrown off. <laughs> But then he jumped back on. <laughs> and he was thrown off again. <laughs> I thought, if he can communicate, why didn't he tell the driver <laughs> when he's stop? <laughs> oh, they're, they're balmy lot over there. <laughs> about Ricardo Modelman? He's one of the original Latin lovers. Do you think women prefer that sort of Latin macho type? No, if you've got a big chopper, yes. <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know whether Ricardo hasn't got a big chopper, but he has got this... <laughs> he's got this wonderful grill pan, right? <laughs> They're not getting anywhere. <laughs> Uh, but without, mm, 
He wouldn't have an act, would he? Uh. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I was talking to Lily earlier about uh, VE Day. Did that take you back to your days in the army barracks? Let me see. I remember the day it started. It's uh, September the 3rd, 1939. And my brother and my father and I were watching my mother dig a shelter. <laughs> So I said to my dad, she's a great little woman <laughs> and getting smaller all the time. <laughs> At about three o'clock in the afternoon, uh, a man called uh, uh, Chamberlain, who did uh, prime minister impressions, <laughs> he, uh, he spoke on the wireless. He said, as, as from three o'clock today, we are at war with Germany. I'd love that we bit. <laughs> well, that included and, you. Uh, it was a great day for me as two military policemen <laughs> dragged me screaming from under the bed and uh, took me to this regiment there. Did you see any Germans close up? Yeah, we, uh, we had an experience. We had a Lieutenant Bowman Smythe who was very brave. Bowman Smythe. And I was driving him in a, in a Bren carrier looking for a new position for a, an observation post. And I thought it was a bit quiet for being in a war. And obviously he'd gone off the road somewhere. And uh, he stopped and got his map out and had a pipe. Markings on this map. Suddenly I heard a noise behind me. And I turned around and there was three German paratroopers like this. <laughs> So he said, what's going on, Milligan? I said, uh, I said there's uh, some Germans here. They will ask them what they want. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said they, that they want to surrender, sir. He said, well, tell them we haven't the facilities. <laughs> So I said, tell him, tell him to go away. So I said, I don't speak German. He said, oh, come here, hold this. So I went over to these three paratroopers and went, choo. <laughs> I don't know how we won. <laughs> We won because we have men like you. Thank you very much, Spike Thank Milligan. You know. We have to go, but once again, we are swept away by a tropical hurricane of passion from our personal Cuban missile crisis, Margarita Prakatan. As the nuclear nightingale prepares to sing her tempestuous tribute to her adopted city, we can only echo the words of Richard Simmons. You are worth it, Margarita Prakatan. Hey, we are in London, the richest place of the whole world, where are the more beautiful and elegant people. I love you, baby. I came from New York to London. I started spreading the news. I'm living today. I want to be a part of it in all New York. <laughs> this vagabond shoe, I'm longing to stress. Rise through the very heart of it in all New York. I want to wake up in a city that never sleeps. And find a queen of the hills. 